Hello all. Uh, I saw a question on the forum about uh, dual booting uh, Arch Linux uh, with Windows 7, but uh, it was to use the uh, latest uh, Arch Linux installer called Architect Linux, which you can get from SourceForge. I'll put a link in the, the description. And the question was, uh, it was for a non-UEFI, uh, so uh, just basic BIOS. Um, and if you could shrink the partition and use uh, Architect Linux to install Arch Linux alongside Windows 7 specifically. So um, the, answer to that, the answer to that is yes, of course. So if you're, I just, this is Windows 7 just set up, no updates, just out of the box. So uh, click, uh, right click on the computer in the start panel, if it's there or if it's on your desktop and click manage and you go to disk management and uh, shrink volume and I'm not sure how much I can shrink this by but uh, just give it a second to load and uh, hopefully we can shrink this volume oh yeah okay so it's in reality you probably have much more hard drive space but I'm going to try to give it 10 gigs of free space so 10 and three zeros and then uh, hit shrink and uh, should be approximately point 0.9 point something uh, gigs or so free. Yeah, 9.77. So it's unallocated disk space that you can use to put Arch Linux on using Architect Linux, all right? Uh, so I'm in VirtualBox here, so I'm just gonna right click and choose a disk image. And if you want, you can sh uh, show in folder there it is there and 64 bit and this is Windows I believe 64 bit uh, let's go to computer uh, properties yeah 64 bit and it's 4 gigs of RAM okay so with the drive um, I always uh, suggest this is that if you're not sure uh, burn it to a CD-ROM yes you can put it on a USB if you're sure uh, but if it doesn't boot then put it on a CD-ROM. So with the uh, disk in the drive, just uh, reboot your Windows. And I know this is on a virtual machine, so it's pretty much risk-free, and it's a little more daunting on a main system. So I understand that, but I just wanted to, to uh, step through the process and also take a look at Architect Linux. So here we are at the uh, boot screen. I'm going to press Tab here. You don't have to do this. This is just for me. And I'm going to put VGA equals 792, 791. Uh, that's about 1024 by 768, just to make the screen larger. So it'll boot up, um, just like any uh, Arch or any Linux distro, basically. Uh, this won't have a splash screen. There's no desktop interface. It's all command line based. Okay, so just please wait in uh, various languages. Uh, search for network connection. And network connection detected, and you press OK. And it uh, that just went out to GitHub to make sure we had the latest install script. And it rechecks the installer that we're uh, as the root. Then this will synchronize the database to um, Arch Linux. And so the install this installer download download the latest packages from the Arch repositories. Installations are vanilla, so only the minimal necessary configuration is undertaken okay so step one good place to start step one prepare the installation uh, set the keyboard map um, whatever I'm going to uh, type in US and X11 environment uh, US English that's pretty cool new thing uh, configure the mirror list by country I usually do that and it spits out in uh, this is called nano text editor text editor uh, command line based if you're not sure uh, or if you want to modify anything you can you know type in but this looks fine to me so just press the control X on your keyboard to exit that and use this mirror list for the installer yes and another option comes up you can uh, sort mirrors by the fastest as well and that was through, I think it said rank mirrors. And go back and 
You can list the devices and you can see SDA1. I'll zoom in here. VirtualBox hard disk SDA1 is NTFS. SDA2 is um, as NTFS as well. And both of those are Windows. So we have we don't see uh, the other partition yet because it's not there's no uh, allocation yet. Um, so we'll prepare the disk SDA and we'll use uh, these are all command line based okay I'm not going to use auto partition I like to use F disk because um, I have a solid state drive and it aligns the partition table uh, properly for solid state so a little tricky here if you're not sure but the basic basic steps for just a basic partition is type N for new primary you should be okay you can put extended if you wish so like if you want extended you press E if you want the default you just press enter which is primary and the third partition as I mentioned is empty so that's the default three and the first and last sector I'm not going to set up a swap or a home folder and just straight Arch, Arch Linux install and then uh, just press W to write uh, we're going to leave uh, volume local volume management disk manage out, management out. So we're going to mark, mount the partition. Uh, pay attention here. You don't want SDA one or SDA two because that's where Windows is. We want SDA three. And the file system instead of NTFS or DA or um, FAT32, we want one of the extension ones or safest bet. Extension four is the most popular one, so just press OK for that, and it's done mounting. Now, as, as I said, I didn't set up a swap file, so there's no space for that. So just leave it at none if you choose to do that and press OK. And we're going to leave out any other additional partitions. So done on that one as well. So back, install base. And I like to refresh the Pac-Man keys uh, just to be sure, just to be on the safe side. And then now we're going to install the base. Uh, right here... Um, no harm in getting the uh, base devel or base developer if you want the long-term support kernel you can do that as well but I would get the, the developer packages as well because you'll probably need them down the road in this case I'm gonna, uh, press option 2 and then okay Whoa, sorry about that <laughs> synchronizing uh, packages uh, so what this will do is install the base packages for Arch Linux so I'll be back when this is uh, when it's finished up. All right, so once it's uh, finished installing the base packages, I uh, put you back to the uh, dialog screen here, and we want to install the bootloader. And in most cases, we want to install Grub. So you just press Enter for OK, and it's Grub 2, technically. And uh, this will download Grub 2 beta. Don't worry about that. And OS Prober, which will pick up any other file system you have. And I'll ask you where you want this. In this case, we're dual booting on the same hard drive so SDA is fine okay that's I wouldn't try to choose anything else so you just hit enter, enter for yes and then it'll install grub for you I'm not on wireless obviously in a virtual box you can install wireless uh, display all devices none were det detected but uh, you can install all of them or if you these look familiar to you you can uh, install one individual but in this case I don't need one or in uh, to install so configure the base is next and generate the file system table I like to use the uh, device partition code you can go by label or UUID unique code um, but I'm fine with DEV and set a host name this can be anything uh, VBox I usually for virtual box set your time zone that's pretty uh, self-explanatory Press enter, confirm that you want that as a time zone. I leave that at UTC, okay, and set your system locale. Figure the user accounts and set your uh, root and passwords. And then we go to install desktops, and I'm going to prepare graphics, input, sound devices. So we're going to get the also, uh, sound architecture, uh, Zorg, the Windows, X Windows, and the input devices. So again, this will just uh, take a, a bit of time to download and install. Once that's finished, I uh, go on to the dis uh, display driver. Uh, so in this case, it's VirtualBox. If it doesn't pick it up, uh, select no and choose an open source driver. 
or I mean, sorry, select yes to an, an open source or no uh, for proprietary such as NVIDIA. All right, then we move on to install desktop environment. Okay, choose from one. So uh, I'm just going to go GNOME for now. And uh, you can see it's uh, 1.3 gigabytes installed, uh, 270 or so to uh, download. So this will take a bit of time. So I'll be back when this is uh, ready to go. Okay, so moving along, uh, install a network connection manager. Uh, since installing GNOME, yeah, it's already been installed, and I'm sure the login screen, GDM, is uh, GNOME Display Manager. So we go back, uh, accessibility packages if you want those, and then run your MK init for your uh, boot in init RAM FS Linux. You can review the configuration. I'm just going to leave it as it is. Back and done, and close installer. Yes. Uh, let's just restart. Okay, and uh, we'll still have the. Uh, if you still have the installation CD in or whatever it boots to, just go to uh, boot the second option here. Boot existing OS. I'll press enter, and I'll give you an option here: Arch Linux, advanced options for Arch Linux. I'll zoom in. Sorry. And Windows 7. So let's uh, take a look at our Arch Linux installation. Okay, so this is the uh, GNOME login or uh, window manager or desktop manager uh, for your accounts to log in and stuff. So whatever you chose for a username and password, uh, you can just type in your password and you click on your name. Remember, this is VirtualBox, so it might not be as robust as it is in on your system. But this is the GNOME desktop. Activities is where your programs are. And you click this uh, show all applications and you see you have a lot of stuff out of the box not like an extensive but it's enough to get you started um, there's the uh, up here is your sound and you click your username and you can log out this is power and this is goes to system settings and you can choose your backgrounds and moving along uh, this is a, a default web browser epiphany they just call it web now all right, so I guess we have to go into a terminal. Remember, this is Arch Vanilla, so you're not going to get too many helpers out of the box. Uh, type in sudo systemctl. Oh, no bash completion, I forgot that. Enable, and then capital network. Uh, capital N for that, and manager dot service. And you're going to be prompted for a password if you haven't set it up. So just your login password. Oh, if I remember it correctly. There we go. All right. So we'll just uh, hit this power button and restart the computer. Okay. So what you have to do uh, once network manager is enabled, go to your settings. Could be a virtual box thing too. Go to network. You see that it's on. If you add a profile. And you choose IP uh, v4 and click add uh, this will kick in and it'll be on okay so that's an overview of GNOME if you never used GNOME desktop before uh, one more thing is you can uh, say we have Firefox there's a ton of extensions you can get you can uh, right click add to favorites and it gives you notifications that's been added to favorites so there's your Firefox there and so on all right, so let's uh, reboot again, and uh, we'll see if Windows is still alive and kicking. So you just arrow key down, and it says Windows 7 Loader. Press Enter, and starting Windows. And there we have it, uh, Windows 7, uh, dual booting Arch Linux on the same hard drive. Uh, you see there's less disk space, obviously. And uh, using the awesome um, Arch Linux uh, installer, um, architect Linux and many thanks to Carl um, he's done an amazing always does amazing work on this and it's such a joy to use okay so anybody's curious about Windows 7 uh, and uh, a way to install Arch Linux on the same hard drive um, I hope this helps you out and thank you so much for watching and have a good one and we'll talk to you soon and bye for now